The following contains spoilers, so proceed with caution. Let's talk about the ending and let's break it down. What does the ending mean? What does it tell us? The Riddler succeeds. Explosions go off everywhere. Batman is not as smart as I thought. He's not that <laughs> smart. Bruce Wayne. He's not that smart. The Riddler's plan went off without a hitch almost. Kind of. I mean, he, mm. it did. It went off mostly without a hitch. His minions are the ones that failed it all. But the, the explosions go off all over Gotham and Gotham floods. Right before that, we got that scene that we're going to talk about in a little bit. But the Riddler guys wins the day. Scotty, break down the scene. And what the heck did we learn from the ending? Well, we learn that the Joker supposedly is in Arkham. If that is Arkham, I think that's Arkham, right? Yeah, so Arkham. State and uh, the Riddler believes that he's done trapped forever never gonna be able to you know fully realize what he's trying to do and bring all the corruption in gotham to light and then the joker is there basically giving him a pep talk like now this is just one setback and uh the line about comeback story i feel like that's gonna be the whole second movie and it's going to be for a lot of the villains, like the Penguin, like Falcone. And it's going to be almost like that Empire Strikes Back, bro. And the the dark villain types, uh, because Gotham is in martial law right now. And I dare say that the explosion divided Gotham right down the poverty line, too. So now you have the people that live in the upper uh, areas of the city not flooded and now you'll have all the slums and everything like in complete disarray uh but i think that's where the story is going to go is further the divide in gotham further the chaos and then give arkham the opportunity to fall apart all these people escape and then it ends in even more chaos potentially but that's a lot of speculation <laughs> a lot of a lot of chaos yeah no, totally. And you're talking about the the flood and all that stuff. I feel like in that talk between Riddler and Joker, we were just like a, a sentence away. Like if it had gone just a little bit longer, maybe Joker would have been like, hey, I know you didn't like Carmine and uh, Penguin was a part of his crew. But you know what? I know Oswald pretty well and he actually has a sub. So, you know, <laughs> maybe uh, when we, we all can get out and then uh, get, get on the sub. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> and that's that's the sequel right there it's uh the three villains on a sub and maybe that's they'll see catwoman as well <laughs> yeah. i love the fact that this movie ends with gotham in in complete disarray but also with batman becoming batman batman is now the batman the batman that we know and love from all these movies he's no longer vengeance right he learns from the riddler's goons that vengeance is maybe not what he needs to be propagating around the town so he decides i'm batman i am hope he is hope he is faith he is humanity and he helps everybody he saves everybody and i love the connection he has with that with the mayor's son throughout the entire movie it really came to an head yes. at the end and you see like he's like this is i am i am portraying i am the wrong portrayal right now i need to be this and i love that it's almost reverse batfleck right like bat like he batfleck learns it later on in life and he starts off one way well, actually it's not reverse it's the exact same so that's that's what i love <laughs> I, it's just I know it's actually just him, but I just I thought that it was kinda, great. it is kind of reverse though too, right? because he he yeah he because he was becoming dark he, later. He started yeah yeah his dark parts yeah, were in like, the center of that. Yeah, he started dark yeah. in this one now when he ends dark. But I I just loved it. I love the way they did it and it all came came to it and then and then the Gotham in chaos the the what is it, the National Guards coming in you have that and then you have Falcone is dead now. And on top of that, so now you have Penguin who's who's lurking now in the shadows, and he wants to be be the big cheese. He wants to he wants to be the head honcho. He's got that great uh, that great um, dusk shot of him looking out the window, which is in all the freaking trailers, and it's mm -hmm. his last shot of the movie. But you get that, and you get the sense of this is this is a man, a power hungry individual who's now going to do anything he can to go up. Because the one thing with the Penguin, I said as much as I loved the Penguin before, guys, the one thing with the Penguin was his reaction to Falcone being the rat was, I thought, one of the best parts of the movie. I should have mentioned this before, but it was so good. And like It's very subtle, and it's just a moment, but it was so good, his reaction, because that's how it should be. He was so pissed off because he is a loyal, loyal gangster. Andrew, break down the ending. The ending, it... it 
raises a lot of cool questions about Gotham. And Scott, I love what you said there, buddy, but the, the poverty line, I didn't even think of that. And that's going to, you know, that's going to have repercussions. Miss Rael looks like she's a good mayor, but I don't think any mayor is that good of a mayor to bounce back from that so quickly. And I don't know if Gotham's real estate market is as ridiculous as ours here in Ontario, but if it is, the property damage they are looking at is, I don't think Bruce Wayne has deep enough pockets for that. So to think like, how, how are they going to get Gotham out of this? And then what does it look like when they do? Uh, and like, I hope that the sequel doesn't pick up, you know, five years later and Gotham's back to normal. I hope it doesn't. I hope the repercussions of this flood still roll. And I think it will because for the first time, unless, you know, touch wood, I hope nothing happens to Paul Dano, but for the first time in history, we have a Batman movie where the villain can carry on um, and, you know, still potentially be a big threat. So if the Riddler's... Uh, plan leaves behind these aftershocks and like the political upheaval of Gotham is all over the place. And there is a power vacuum now. Uh, I want to see that continue in a more serialized way than I think Batman has been before. So let's see Gotham get worse before it gets better. Uh, and let's see the, the, uh, the villains popping up and kind of like, what was it, Arkham City, where like every district just was like, the villain was like, okay, this is, this is my place now. This is where Two-Face rolls by the courthouse. Let's see what that looks like and how they play with that. And we could get some really cool combinations out of it. Give each I, villain a, a part of the city that later in the yeah. climactic battle, they turn into cannibalistic uh, living beings, like in Ninja Batman. No? no, no one saw no one saw Ninja Batman. I did see Ninja Batman. You guys yeah. need to see Ninja Batman. Yeah. Yeah. Cannibalistic yeah. cities. It's yep. I said it. Well, okay. The question is, will there will that little kid, the mayor's kid, uh uh arm himself with a band of monkeys? Just like in that story. <laughs> All right, moving yeah. on to what Andrew is saying. He brings up a very good point. The movie ends, it's Gotham's flooded. And you have the prisoners, and they're all alive. All of the villains, except for Falcone, are alive. They're all they can all move on. And we can get the Rose Gallery forever and ever and ever. And I thought this movie did a great job of using them for the mystery, for the plot, and not having them drive the plot. Like I think that was a problem with the '90s movies, where they try to have all uh, not just those movies, a lot of superhero movies. They try to have the villains like we're going to team up, but this one was Penguin's got his crap going on there, Catwoman's got her crap going on there, and Riddler is the web above it all and right and i really like the way that they did that where they weren't they didn't have to be connected but they were all there and we knew who they were 